Hi guys, it's Jen with Sew It Online and I'm back here to show you another demo on a Baby Lock Brilliant machine. Now don't forget to subscribe to our site, click the link um, so that you'll get the updated videos. We're going to be doing a lot of these demos and we want you guys to be well educated when you're out there looking for a sewing machine. So come here, come back, subscribe, get our videos and we'll help you find the machine that's going to best fit your needs. So today I'm going to talk to you about the Baby Lock Brilliance, which is an awesome machine. It's in the Genuine Collection and it's got some really great features. Um, it's great if you're a beginner sewer or maybe you've been sewing for a little while, you know, you've had your machine for 30 years and it's time to do an upgrade. This has features that I, I believe me, you're going to want, you're going to love, and you're going to wonder how you sewed without them. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is lift open this lid. Now the lid is pretty cool because it's going to keep all the dust out. I've got cats in my house. They like to play with the thread. Dust gets in there. So this is a really nice feature when I'm not using it. I can keep it closed and they can keep their paws off my machine. Uh, I'm going to open it up and it does show you all the different stitches you have on there. And I'm not going to do all of them for you, but I will go through some of the essential ones. The ones that are, are important when you're looking for bu to buy a machine. Things that you definitely are going to want. Let's start with threading it. So first you're going to put the thread on your spool pin there. And the great thing about the Baby Lock machines is everything's labeled for you. It's right on the machine. I don't have to get out my instruction manual just to figure out how to thread it. I'm going to follow the solid line here. So one goes under this little metal bar, two, three is straight down, four is up and around the take up lever, and then five is, oh, you know what? I had my presser foot down. That's a big no-no. We should start with our presser foot up. So let's do this again. You're going to go one, two, three, four is up and around the take up lever, five is straight down, six is right there, seven, and then I can cut the thread on the side. Now this is the best feature ever. Pay attention. Watch the needle. Don't watch this hand over here. I'm just going to push down on this button and it threads my needle for me. Thank you, baby lock. All right, so we've got our needle threaded. It is a drop-in bobbin. This is a full rotary hook, which means this the bobbin case goes full circle. You know, you might have be used to a machine that has a bobbin case that goes down underneath. And the problem with those is it's called an oscillating hook. It goes back and forth. You might be going over a lot of layers of thread or, or a fabric, and then your needle gets stuck down. And then you have to crank this wheel really hard. Does this sound familiar? Does this happen to you? And then you pull your fabric and there's four threads coming out. That's because it gets caught around the hook. This doesn't have that. This is what they call a jam proof bobbin. It goes full circle so there's nothing to get caught on. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my bobbin, drop it right in there, and then follow the path. It even cuts it for me. When I put this back on, I'm ready to sew. No more bringing up your bobbin thread like you had to do. That's, that's old school. If you're doing that still, you're working too hard. Let's get to sewing. So now I'm going to lower my presser foot. I'm going to show you some of these features. Some of these buttons here on the, on the machine are what we're talking about. These features, you used to have to spend over $2,000 to get these. Now they have it on this Baby Lock Brilliant, and you're going to love them. All right, so I'm going to start with the needle up needle down button to show you what that does so first i push that button the needle goes down and when i start sewing notice how my needle stops in the down position every time i stop remember back in the day you had to do this and then you had to lift this turn that that's a lot of work if you're still sewing like this and this you're working too hard you need needle up needle down um, that's a feature that, trust me, anyone would love. I don't care if you're a quilter or a garment sewer. That's something that you can definitely use no matter what kind of sewing you're doing. Now, the other thing I'm going to show you is this knee lift here. Okay, now the way I have the machine positioned is really for the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I don't have it positioned properly. But what you want to do is sit at the machine so that this is hitting right at your knee. And then your foot control on the floor is going to sit right below your foot you know, where your knee's sitting. So what that does is as I move this, and I'm gonna have to move it with my left knee, see how it raises and lowers my presser foot? So I'm using my knee lift to raise and lower my presser foot. So now I can sew and I can raise my presser foot and I can turn. See that? Look at that, no hands. It keeps your hands on the fabric. 
So imagine if this was a big heavy jacket or maybe a giant quilt that I was working with. You know, you're fighting with it and constantly having to take your hand off to lift and then move this and then put it down. That can be awkward and it can be annoying. So having this knee lift is a tool that you're gonna love. So I, I suggest if you have one of these, maybe you're not using it, get that thing out. It's, it's there for a reason. So raise and lower your presser foot. Now this button, is going to stop the machine dead in its track. So it stopped feeding the fabric and it actually stitches in one place, which is it's actually tying a knot underneath. And then I can hit my scissor button, my favorite. And what it's doing is it tied a knot and it pulled and cut my thread to the back of the fabric. So it just looks like one line of stitching on the front. You can still go in reverse if you would like. That's this button right here. But it is going to look a little bit different. You're going to have that double layer of thread on top where you did the reverse stitch. Whereas when I do the lock stitch, it's actually just stitching and then ties a knot. So that prevents you from having to tie all those knots, prevents you from having to cut all that thread. It's just, it's more efficient, it's quicker, it's faster. All right, so how strong is this thing? It's an electronic machine. You're probably thinking, oh, my old machine is stronger than that. I, I beg to differ with you. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this denim and look at that. You can't get any better than that. I don't even have to push it. I mean, those it has what they call a diamond feeding system. So it feeds that fabric with accuracy, no matter how thick. Um, and see, this is pretty thick. Some of your old sewing machines, you can't even get this thickness underneath there. This machine, I could actually lift that presser foot even higher. My entire finger can fit under there. Can you do this on your machine? If not, it might be time for a new one because, like I said, we're, you know, if you had to hem your jeans, which I have to do, I'm not short and I'm not tall, but I always have to hem my jeans, that flat felt seam is very, very thick. It's hard to get that under your presser foot on your sewing machine. But on here, you have absolutely no problem. And again, no hands, I can sew through that. That is easily nine layers of denim. So that's a, that's a thick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, eight layers of denim. You want nine? I'll do nine. I'll flip that over, now we got nine. Has no problem feeding that. Isn't that scissor button just cool? I love it. All right, so that's, that's the first thing that you want to look for when you're buying a sewing machine. Next thing you should check out, how does it work with stretchy fabrics? You know, we have a lot of stretchy fabrics now. I love knits. I wear leggings, I wear t-shirts. You know, pretty much everything in my wardrobe is a knit fabric. So if you had to hem something that was a knit, or maybe you're a garment sewer and you want to make something that's a knit, you want to make sure you can use stretch fabric with your machine. Can your machine handle it? The older machines, we didn't have stretch fabrics back then. so. They, they couldn't handle it. You were doing stretch and sew, and that's too much work too. That's old school. I'm gonna show you the new way to do it. Now the reason for this, and I'm gonna show you a regular straight stitch on a stretchy fabric so you can understand why you need what's called tri-motion on your sewing machine. If I just did a regular straight stitch on a knit fabric, you know, say I was sewing a garment, and you know, it took me two hours to get this thing done, and now I'm so excited I wanna go try it on. Put it over my head, do you see what just happened? It ripped. So now all that work down the toilet, right? So I'm gonna show you what the stretch stitch is, which is number five. So on your sewing machine here on the panel, you have some different options over here on how to navigate your stitches. The first one is a direct panel. So if I want the stretch straight stitch, that's stitch number seven right there. And let me show you what this does. And I'm gonna slow this down so you could see it. It goes up two and then back one, up two, back one. This allows the thread to stretch with your fabric. Get it? So now there's gonna be some play in that thread. So now when I go to try this on after two hours of sewing, isn't that nice too? But now it stretches and it's not ripping. That's what you want in your sewing machine. Now let me show you another stitch that I use all the time. If you don't have a serger, you're gonna to wanna to pay close attention to this too. I'm gonna to use stitch number 17, and I'm gonna hit this panel button right here and type in 17. 
and this is an overcasting stitch. So I'm first going to adjust my width, which is right here. I want to use the full seven millimeter width. Okay, seven mil when, when I'm talking about the width, it's the needle plate opening. So it's actually the width that your needle can go from left to right. The older sewing machines were about four or five millimeters. This is seven. They go up to like nine now. So we're almost twice the size that we used to be. So if you have a machine that's about 30 years old, you probably only have four millimeters there. I've got seven and I wanna maximize what I can do. So I'm gonna use the full width. And I'm also gonna increase my stitch length to three just because I want this to stitch out a little bit faster. So are you ever sewing in a pattern and it tells you to do a straight stitch and then go back over with a zigzag or a serger? I look at that and I'm like, what? You mean I gotta sew it twice? I don't wanna do that, I don't have time for that. So that's where this stitch comes in. This is a very important stitch. Now, anytime a pattern says do a straight stitch, go back over with a zigzag or a serger, I can use this stitch and do it all in one step. That saves you a lot of time. And it's gonna look a lot more professional too. So it's sewing my straight stitch and finishing all in one step. And this is also meant for a stretchy fabric. So I'm just stretching that top one a little bit as I sew and you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. But I used to do this on my daughter's pants. You know, I'd buy her sweatpants when she was little and I swear she'd look at them and rip a hole in the crotch like five minutes later. So before I even let her have them, I would put this stitch right down in the crotch seam and that didn't happen anymore. So this is a really good stitch to have. Oh, I'll use my knee lift to raise my presser foot. See how nice that is. I don't even have to reach back here because that's a lot of work. Um, so you can see what that did. And now you could trim this so it's a lot closer. I usually get it closer. I'm sewing at an angle here. But see what it did? Now we have a stretch. Isn't that nice? So you could do this if you have the proper stitches. So that's why I'm showing you stitches that are important when you're buying a sewing machine. Now, a couple other things you wanna consider. On the Baby Lock Brilliant, you have a lot more space here than some of the other sewing machines. This is eight inches. This is a lot of space. Um, your older machines, you probably had about half of that, maybe four or five. So if you're, if you're sewing on a jacket or maybe, you know, anything big, quilting even, this is a great machine for quilters to start with. Um, it's got a lot of really good features on it. That's something that you're going to want to use. All right, so here I'm going to show you something else that's pretty handy. Because I know, because I sew, everybody that I, knows that I sew, which is just about everybody, anytime they get a tear in, in a piece of clothing or, you know, they need something fixed, they always bring it to me. It's my least favorite thing to do, but I do it anyways because that's what we do when we sew. We fix things for people. And this is the common one. Here, can you fix this? I tore my pants and it, they, they give you something and it's not even torn on a seam. You know, a seam is easy because you could just sew right back over the seam. But when it's like this and it's in the middle of fabric, it makes it a lot harder. You know, in the past, I used to fold this over and try to stitch really close and maybe you've done this too. And then you end up with this little pucker, you know, and it doesn't look right. It's a dart, you just sewed a dart and it was supposed to be flat. So I'm gonna show you how to go about doing this the correct way. And I'm gonna use a three-step zigzag on here, which is number 12. Nope, did I hit 12? Yes. <laughs> All right, so on number 12, and then I'm also going to increase my width again to seven, and then I'm going to narrow, or make my stitch length a little bit shorter, so it's a little tighter. I would want to match my thread to my fabric. So in this case, I would want to pick pink thread. I'm going to keep the white thread just so you could see what happens when I stitch this. If this was a pair of pants, I would also fuse something to the back of that just to hold it in place. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to put this right underneath my presser foot. And what I'm going to do is line up my tear with the center of my presser foot. And then I'm going to stitch this right on top. So it's just stitching right over, catching both sides of that fabric. And then I cut my thread. Ooh, I can use my knee lift. And then see what it did? It, it fixes that, keeps it nice and flat. And now you can hand it back to them. And again, you'd want to use the same color thread and you wouldn't even see that. So that's how you would hem something like that. So there you go. That's a bonus for you. Just gave you a little secret. So you're, if you do buy this machine from us, which you can do on our website, 
you're gonna get the sewing from A to Z class. And we're really gonna get in depth with this machine and what it can do. You're gonna know this machine inside and out by the time you take that class. We're gonna show you how to do a buttonhole. We'll show you how to do a blind hem on your sewing machine. We'll show you how to sew a button on with the machine. I mean, there's so many things that you can do that are in that sewing from A to Z. You're, you're gonna love it. You're gonna be using this thing inside and out. Let me show you some of the other uh, decorative stitches that you get with this machine. One of my favorites is called a blanket stitch and I use it for applique all the time. This is an important stitch to have because trust me, I don't do anything by hand anymore. To me, that's a four letter word. If I can do it on the sewing machine, I will find a way. So the blanket stitch here that I like to use is number 33. It's in the basic utility. So I'm gonna hit that button and type in 33. And again, I can adjust my width and length. It does set it up so that I can do a regular applique. I'm just gonna cut this little piece of fabric so you can see what I mean. Well, that was a bad cut, but that's okay. So it does show you on the screen what presser foot to use. And again, it sets your length and width for you, but you can change that if you desire. So I'm gonna drop my needle into my fabric here and I'm gonna start sewing so that you could see what this is doing. So this is like your traditional applique. A lot of quilters use this. Um, I see this on like baby blankets. And then I'm gonna turn, but see what it's doing here? So it's grabbing it. And you know, we used to have to do this by hand. I don't do anything by hand anymore. If I can do it on the machine, I absolutely will. Okay, flip again. Now I'm gonna increase my length just so you can see how that's going to open up the stitch a little bit i like to increase the length because it sews it faster and i'm all about fast let's get it done oops I'm kind of getting off track here but that's okay all right so now the other thing that I did not show you, because I was using, I was reaching around here using my my um, my lift, my presser foot lifter. With app, having this knee lift really helps um, with applique, especially on a circle. If I was going to do a circle on this applique, this is where the knee lift really comes in handy. And you got to bear with me because the way this machine is set up. I've got to sew kind of backwards with my left hand or my left leg. <laughs> but I want you to see that it really does ha it helps because I sometimes have to stop, lift my presser foot and adjust my fabric when I'm doing applique, especially when you're going around curves. So see how I can lift my presser foot and then just start sewing again. But I can keep my hands right here on the fabric, and that is what's important. I'm gonna slow this down too. When you're doing something like applique that's a little bit more precise, you should slow the machine down. And I didn't mention it before, but this is a speed control right here on the front of your machine, which I love because when my daughter's sewing, trust me, I walk over here and I turn that thing down because kids, they like to sew like me, pedal to the metal, just like I drive. But if you slow this down, the even even if I'm at top speed and I'm pushing as hard as I can on that foot control, the machine is still going to go slow. Okay, see that? And that's because I put what I call the cruise control on slowest speed. Medium speed works well for me for applique because then I can use my knee lift, turn, knee lift, turn. But it really does, it, it helps. It keeps your hands free from having to, you know, reach around and do this and do that. And, you know, it, it just helps. I'm not going to finish that one. But now you can see how you can go around a curve pretty easily. And if you put in a thicker thread up here, this stitch looks gorgeous. It looks like you did it by hand. And you don't have to tell anyone that you didn't because you still did it. You just did it on here. It's no different. All right, so another thing that I wanna show you is lettering, because that is something that is um, on this machine that's not on all machines. And if you're a quilter, this should be important to you because you should put a label on your quilt. So if you don't have an embroidery machine, 
I would definitely recommend doing the lettering. Now there's quite a few different fonts and it does come with a quick reference threading guide or not threading guide, but a quick reference guide that's gonna show you all the different letters and what characters they are. So I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and type in brilliant in, into the machine. I'm gonna go down here to the A button and it's gonna ask me, do I wanna cancel the current pattern? Yes, I do. So now when I'm in this series, now I can type out what I want it to say. And we can pick a different font. There's a regular font, regular font, uh, script font, an outline font, and then there's also the Cyrillic font. And you also have a Japanese font if you wanna do Japanese lettering. I'm just gonna go with the Gothic font. That's the first font. So I'm gonna type in B, which is O2, and then R, 18, BR, I is 09, and then we have an L, 12, 12, whoops, oh no, I typed a K, I didn't want that, so let's go back. See, I just hit the back button, we're good to go. 12, brilliant, let's see if I can spell it right. And then I want 01 for A, and then I'm going to do N, which is 14, and T is 20. All right. Now I can also tell it to um, knot and cut at the end. This is where I'm going to get lazy, and I'm going to unplug my foot control, and I'm going to go ahead and use my start stop button. So now I can put my start stop button down there, and it'll stitch it all by itself. Oh, let's go a little faster. So now it's on the R. So you can type out, you know, made with love, by grandma, you know, for whoever, and then definitely put the year on there. There are numbers in here as well. It's important to put the year on your projects because people tend to keep them for a long time. Quilts get handed down from generation to generation, and people want to know when they were made and who made them. You know, it's a story to tell, so make sure that you're putting that information on your quilt. It is very important. All right, so this is done, and you heard it cut. I'm going to use my knee lift, take that out, and look, I've got brilliant right there. Isn't it brilliant? I think it's brilliant. Okay. So a few other stitches just to show you. You've got a lot of decorative stitches on here that you can use um, for other things in, in sewing and in quilting. Um, and you can play around with your threads. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of fun threads out there on the market. Um, definitely check out some of our videos on, on threads because we do a lot with thread. I have a thread obsession. Um, there's always a different thread for every stitch. And, and this, the thread that you select can really make or break your project. So if you see a pretty thread, go ahead and play around with it. Just make sure you're using the right size needle. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in the A to Z sewing video. So if you do buy this machine, check that video out. I know she's talking about thread in that video. All right, so I'm going to clear this screen. Let's go back to one of our decorative stitches over here. So if I want a decorative stitch up here on the lid, it's telling me that I have two different sections. So I have section one and section two and section three. So section, I like some of these um, satin stitches over here. I'm gonna get stitch 11. Um, so I'm gonna hit the little leaf button twice and then I'm gonna hit uh, stitch number 11. And then see, it's like a half moon. Now what changed on my screen is my presser foot. It's now telling me that I need the end foot. So let me change that. This is a snap on presser foot. Woo, snap on and fly away. So I snap that off. The machine does come with a little tray that sits right inside there and all your presser feet that you need are right there. They're all labeled. So that it's easy to swap them out. I'm gonna pop this one out. And all you do is drop that on there and now you have the correct foot. Now the reason they're asking for this foot is because there is, it is a decorative stitch, it's a satin stitch. So that means the thread is gonna be raised up a little bit higher on your fabric. So this foot has a little channel. So that way the outside of the foot can lay on the fabric and the thread can go in the channel. 
So that's just a little bit of why they want a different foot. Ah. All right. And again, it's selected my length and width for me. I don't have to change it. A really cool thing to do with this is try a twin needle with this stitch. You can use a twin needle with this stitch, which we'll show you in that A to Z video. Be sure to uh, click on our link, subscribe to our channel. Um, and you know, again, if you're gonna buy a machine, that, that A to Z video is so valuable. You're gonna learn so much about your machine. This is knowledge that we've been collecting for the past 30 years in sewing. So you definitely are going to enjoy everything that you learn about that. Now, while I'm stitching this, I can hit this button, the lock stitch button, and watch what happens. It finishes the stitch at the end, knots it, and you hear it cut. So I didn't have to do anything but push one button, and it knew to finish off that stitch, knot it, and cut it on the back. So that prevents you from running out of bobbin thread. You know, if I see that my bobbin thread is running low, I can just hit that button. You know, it'll finish my stitch. I can wind a new bobbin and start right where I left off. It's an awesome machine to have. So if you guys are interested in, in purchasing this, please go to our website. It is on sale right now. It retails at $17.99.99, but it's on sale for $8.99. And again, it's going to come with that usage video and the A to Z, um, sewing A to Z video series. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I hope that the Baby Lock Brilliance is everything you're looking for in a sewing machine. And if not, subscribe to our link. We're doing more videos. We'll, I'm sure we can find the machine that's right for you. I'll see you next time.